Coming up this week on Winchester's Deadly Passion, Melissa Bachman heads to both Illinois and Kansas for some incredible turkey hunting. It's not every day you get a triple bearded turkey fighting your decoy. Next, she heads to Kansas for some nonstop turkey action with Midwest Outfitters. And finally, no spring hunting adventure is complete without a little snow goose fun as well. So Melissa teams up with her dad and brother for a trip to South Dakota. I'm out here in Illinois and this is not the type of weather you usually think of when you think of spring turkey hunting. It is freezing cold, windy, and the forecast looks like it is expected to rain all week, almost nonstop. So we're out here on Sunday scouting, looking for where these birds are roosting, and we think we've got a pretty good field right here. Now I've got my ground blind set up behind me, and what our plans are is to hit this ground blind in the morning. If it's expected to be extremely rainy, well, I may not melt, but my camera equipment, well, it for sure will. So we're gonna be inside this blind, and it's a good area where the turkeys usually come. Now, I had great luck here a couple years ago having a gobbler come right out, jump on top of bubbles, had a great deal, shot a beautiful turkey with my boat. So this is the same field we're gonna set up on, and it does look like it's gonna be a wet, soggy morning tomorrow, but the good news is the turkeys still are gonna be moving around, maybe not as much as if it would be a nice sunny day, but it does not look like this year we're gonna have that luxury. So we're all set up here. I'm gonna back out, get in here bright and early in the morning, put the whole flock of decoys out, and the trick this year might be, well, hopefully just not shooting any of my own decoys. Usually I'm shooting a bow into them, but this time I gotta watch that shot placement. So should be a really fun hunt, and I know this place is loaded up with turkeys. Now the first place we set up, well we finally had a tom come way out in the middle of the field, but regardless of what I did, he didn't want to come in. I knew he could see my decoys, I knew he could hear me, but he was not interested. And that's kind of the thing you can run into, and that can be some of the limitations of being in a blind. It's too difficult to try to gather all your gear, get out of the blind, and go after the turkeys. You just need to sit and wait and hope it works out. But they wanted nothing to do with my calling or my decoys. I just saw those jakes. He was coming right over to me. And he saw those jakes. He saw our decoys too, but he liked the jakes better and he took off chasing them. And it looks like right now he's kind of grouped up with them. I don't know if we're gonna be able to pull him away, but he's a really nice bird. He saw our decoys, he liked them, but apparently he liked the real thing better and he wanted to beat up four instead of just our one jake. The weather is getting kind of crazy. It's been raining this morning. And now it's kind of turned to a fog, just kind of nasty out. It's not very warm either, so <sighs> we're just going to sit it out in Illinois. You can only hunt till 1 o'clock, so not much you can do about that except for go home and maybe take a nap or do a little deer scouting after that. So we're going to try sitting in this field. It's not worth trying to change now. We'll stay put here. We've got our whole flock of decoys out and see what happens. Winchester's Deadly Passion is presented by Winchester, the American legend. Matthews, catch us if you can. Cuddyback Digital. Bog Pod, versatility defined. Easton, expect the best. Winchester Repeating Arms. 
and Hunter's Safety System. So after the fog had rolled through on that first day, well, I decided to do a little spot and stock hunting. I went around, tried calling, that just wasn't working either. And I had only a small window in the weather where I could actually be out of the blind and not destroy my cameras. Well, unfortunately, no luck there. So I decided to head to a new blind location on another field I had sat before. Now, this was the exact field that I've had incredible luck deer hunting. There were deer coming on the field, and I knew this was a spot that's good because when I sat there for my deer hunt, well, the turkeys just streamed through. Now, granted, that was fall, but I knew this was a great field that the turkeys like to frequent in the spring. We just had some deer finally come through our setup. It has been probably the toughest turkey hunting weather I've ever seen. I mean, it has been raining literally nonstop for two days. Today's the first day it's starting to get a little bit nicer, and I've been sitting here most of the morning, so I'm hoping these deer are up and moving. That might get all the rest of the animals up and moving. The turkeys can't stay in a tree all day, so hopefully with a little luck, some of these turkeys will come through before one. That turkey just came in out of the blue. I had a hen right here, I was busy filming her, and he just came from the side. The next thing I know, I hear him swatting the decoy. He was beating up my jig. What a beautiful gobbler. What an absolutely awesome bird. Check out the number of these beards, look at this. I think this, he does, he has three separate beards. Really a nice bird and very, very nice spurs as well. We're down here in Illinois, and these Easterns, they are some huge birds. I mean, the tail fan on this, it's about as wide as my shoulders. Just an awesome experience, and turkey hunting has been tough this week. I've been down here in the rain. It's pretty much been raining nonstop for two days. Today's finally the third day. We got a little bit of a break, and this turkey came rolling right in, and uh, these decoys were looking pretty good and that's exactly what he eyed in on. I'm down here at Golden Triangle. I've had some pretty good luck in this field. I've taken two beautiful bucks in this field and now an absolutely awesome turkey. So very, very exciting and this is one big turkey. <laughs> Winchester's Deadly Passion is presented by Swarovski Optic, North American Hunting Club, Rage Broadheads, Golden Triangle Whitetail, Can-Am ATVs and side-by-side -side vehicles, Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry technology, apply it, dry it, and go hunt, and M&P, Advanced by Design. Closed captioning is brought to you by the 4-in-1 Woodsman from Zippo Outdoor. After wrapping up my hunt in Illinois, now I was headed to Kansas. Now Kansas is absolutely full of turkeys. In fact, I've had probably some of the best turkey hunting of my life in Kansas. A couple of years ago, we set up under a roost 
and we watched turkey after turkey after turkey pitch down from the roost. It was really pretty cool and I really enjoy the state because you can get a couple of turkeys on your tag. Now as we headed in, well, the hunting was once again tough. We had nasty weather and for whatever reason, that's just the way you hit it some spring. Sometimes you get beautiful weather, spring, turkeys, birds, not this year. We had a lot of rain, wind, and it really was making the hunting tough. But we had a lot of hens coming through and they were checking out our decoys and basically just hanging out in the rain. It was almost hard to believe that there could be this many hens and no gobbler. But unfortunately, that was exactly the case. The hens stuck around until dark and then they roosted about 30 yards from our blind. It was pretty cool to see them fly right up next to us, but also kind of disappointing that there was no gobbler that decided to join up with all these ladies. The next morning we set up on a disc field that the turkeys liked to frequent. Now there were a lot of turkeys off in the distance, but out of nowhere, a bobcat came running out of the ditch and flew after the whole flock of turkeys. Now I never confirmed one way or another, but I think this bobcat got that big gobbler because all those hens continued making their way up to us, but not the gobbler. And he was a little plump as a turkey and he couldn't quite get off the ground and all the hens lifted off and I'm not sure he made it. That bobcat, I think, got that turkey and unfortunately, well, that kind of ruined that morning's hunt. But it was pretty cool to have all these hens right in our decoys. And we even had one that was strutting. The hens were completely fooled by our Dave Smith decoys. And at times, well, it was pretty hard to tell the decoys from the real hens. But unfortunately, we weren't hunting hens. And apparently, these ladies lost their boyfriend to the bobcat. So we just enjoyed the show and let them pass through. Well, as tough as it is to hunt in the wind, we had a really cool morning. I think if it wasn't for that bobcat, that gobbler would have come right in with the hens. But either way, things happen. But for this afternoon, we're going to try to go find a place that's a little bit out of the wind. Right now, it's gusting probably 30 miles an hour, and it really makes turkey hunting tough. Not only is it hard to shoot a bow long range in this, the turkeys can't hear you calling, and we can't hear them. So plan is we're going to maybe go out, glass a little bit, try to find some turkeys, then get out of the wind. and. Hopefully have a little luck. Tip of the week is brought to you by Canny. The facts say a lot, but the ride says it all. One thing a lot of people don't realize is their cuttyback can be used for more than just scouting for deer. I like to put my attack right in with my decoys on my turkey hunts and use it like a GoPro. The only difference is your GoPro dies after an hour. But your cutty pack, well, it just sits back and waits for the action. Once you have turkeys in your decoy, you will get both photos and video. It's a kind of a cool way to use your cameras during the spring, and as you can see, we get some pretty sweet footage. Plus, the turkeys could care less about having a camera within your flock of decoys. The one trick is to get your cutty back at just the right height for the turkeys. You want it slightly lower than you'd have it for deer, but not too low either. About knee to thigh high is best. The attack will take a photo followed by a 30 second video when triggered. So it's a great added accessory to any turkey hunt. Plus you'll never have to worry about it running out of batteries for your hunt, much less your entire spring season. After several close calls and numerous encounters with Jake's, we still didn't have a gobbler down. But as I looked out into the field, I saw a big Tom running right for us. He started speeding up and the next thing I saw was a big coyote chasing him. This wasn't 75 yards from where the bobcat attack had taken place, but luckily this gobbler escaped and the coyote switched his attention to our decoy instead.
I figured he was going to try to get downwind like coyotes always do, but I was hoping maybe I could get a shot before that. He could tell something was not quite right, and so he decided to circle downwind, and he got our scent before I was able to take a shot and just took off. I love seeing coyotes, and I love shooting them even more. But that didn't happen, and now he had cleared the entire area of turkeys. As he ran off, we continued to call, and it wasn't long, and we had a gobble. A few turkeys started trickling back out at the far end of the field, and I looked over, and two big toms came flying out of the tall grass right on our side. So cool. We just had two giant gobblers come flying out of the side, ran right into our decoys, and the dominant bird just started slapping the jake. I'm telling you what, there's buck fever, that is turkey fever. I'm shaking so bad. These gobblers really, really got me excited. And the coolest part is, I saw the bird go right down. It was just a little bit to the right, but he's down in the tall grass. I did not see this. This guy has a double beard. That is a complete added bonus. When those two toms just came sprinting around the edge, I literally was shaking worse than on a big buck. These turkeys really get me excited. And just a nice, beautiful fan. We're in Kansas and these guys have some awesome turkeys. We're hunting with Midwest Outfitters and so far it has been a really great hunt. We've had turkeys in the field, a little problem with predators from time to time, but I'll be back for those later. Got nice spurs on this bird. And the absolute bonus is this double beard. I just had no idea. Just an awesome deal. Wrapping up the turkey hunts, well, another really fun thing that you can do in the spring, well, it's snow goose hunt. Now, I don't get to do a lot of waterfowl hunting anymore because I'm always out bow hunting and big game hunting. Well, this year, I decided I'm going out for an early spring snow goose hunt, and I was bringing my dad and brother along. Now, growing up as a kid, we did a lot of duck hunting, a lot of goose hunting, and I really enjoyed it. Now, years later, I don't get to do it as much, and I also don't get to hunt with my family enough. So I decided for this early spring snow goose hunt, I was taking my dad and brother out west, and we were gonna go after the snow geese. Now, I had never been out to the Dakotas, and I knew it can be absolutely incredible. So my dad had been out there a couple of weekends before, and he said, it is time to go. You have to see this. And when we got out there, boy, was he right. Well, we just arrived in South Dakota, and it is freezing. Windy, cold conditions, but it should be awesome for hunting snow geese. We got here, and there are literally thousands of geese all over the place. So what we're gonna do is head around knock on some doors, see if we can get permission. We've got some decoys along. It's my dad, my brother, and I. We're gonna be out here having some fun. I have never seen so many geese just swarming the field. It really was incredible. Just the noise being, I don't know, five, six, seven hundred yards away, it's almost deafening. And it really is pretty cool. And the crazy part is, the snow geese, well, they're constantly moving. So a field that's good one day, well, the next day, they may be completely gone. So we were gonna do it old fashioned. We were gonna go knock on doors, asking permission of where the snow geese were. And that's exactly what we did. And honestly, we had great luck. My dad, he has got the gift to gab. And he was going up to doors, getting things lined up while my brother and I were trying to go out and get after these snow geese. Now, yes, a lot of people can go out, you put a thousand decoys out and you wait and you can bring them in. And that would be wonderful but I didn't have a thousand decoys. I didn't have a place to set up and I wasn't confident enough in my skills as a hunter to bring that many geese in. 
So instead, well, we tried a different method. We were crawling out into these fields, trying to get in amongst them. We would get out there, try to set up if possible, but if not, we'd just get in and you could pass shoot them as they were coming through. a wonderful time and this isn't your conventional type hunt that I would usually do but it was a wonderful trip with my family and it was nice to pick my dad up to thank him for all the years that my mom and him brought us out hunting well, it was just a great trip and a lot of fun and I look forward to doing it every single year